Hey everyone, and welcome to this week's episode of the Vancouver Life Real Estate Podcast and YouTube channel. Very interesting episode today as the May 2023 real estate numbers have come out. And as you can imagine, if you've been out there shopping or selling, things are hot. And, and the numbers are in to kind of really speak to that. So I am going to walk through the numbers, point out the key elements, kind of give you my opinion as to why things are happening the way they are, uh, kind of dig a little deeper into the most important elements of this data. And of course, give you my projections into what I think is going to happen in the upcoming months. Right off the top, we like to talk about the sales volumes. How many homes are actually selling in a given month? And well, in the month of May, there was about 3,410 homes that sold. And this has been a constant increase. Uh, we saw about a 16% increase from year over year from May of this time last year, but it's also the fourth monthly increase of sales in a row. And we're actually, we just saw May being the highest amount of homes sold in any given month for 13 months now. So we're over a one year high in sales volumes right now. Sales were actually higher last month than they were back in April of 2022, which was basically the very tail end of that red hot record price bull run. And the funny thing is that those sales amounts, that was back when the overnight interest rate was at 1%. So we've kind of consumed or, or kind of made, um, made way with the current overnight rate of 4.5. It's just almost been absorbed into the marketplace and we're seeing similar sales volumes numbers to back when that same overnight rate was back at 1%. Interestingly, I look back to January of just this year and we saw sales just over a thousand. There's about a thousand and thirty two units sold in January. So we're over three times that amount now, just five months later. And what's kind of interesting about that number as well is there were less homes sold in January of this year than there were in April of 2020, which was the lockdown month. That's when you were basically told to not leave your house because of COVID. And yet more homes sold during that month than uh, back in January of this year. And again, the reason I'm bringing up uh, how low the sales were just back in January is just to show you how quickly this marketplace can change. So we, like I just said, had about 3,400 units sold in May compared to just over a thousand in January. Looking a little bit bigger here, a little bit wider rather, um, our 10 year seasonal average, it's only about one and a half percent or basically the same um, amount of homes sold compared to that average. So we're almost back to 10 year average sales volumes. And if you've listened to any of our recent monthly uh, market updates, we've typically been anywhere from 20 to 25, even 30% below that 10 year average. So sales have actually just happened to have caught up now to essentially the that 10 year average. And this is at a time when you know we've got almost multi-decade low inventory levels. We've got 20 year lows in new listings, and yet the demand is still here, even in this elevated interest rate environment. And so homes are selling and, and at a you know increasing rate here and, and four months in a row. So let's shift now over to what's happening with these new listings, because we are starting to see more listings come to the market, but I'll get into inventory right after that and kind of show you what's happening to these new listings. So we saw about 5,660 new listings in the month of May. That's about 11.5% less than what we saw this time last year. But it is the fifth month in a row where we have seen uh, an increased amount of listings coming to the marketplace. And it's also, interestingly, uh, emulating what happened with sales, new listings came in at a one-year high. So we're just tucked under that 10-year average, about 4% under the 10-year average. And kind of seeing similar to sales, a normal month if we look at 10 year averages as being quote unquote normal. As prices have been increasing over the last four or five months, I think people that may have been holding out prior are now coming to the marketplace. Typically we see these listings, new listings spike in March and April, but now we're seeing them come in May. And we may even see this continue into June as people are starting to say, okay, well, I can finally get a price that I kind of wanted back in April of 2022, because I'll get into it shortly, but prices are almost back to that, to that uh, era of our peak. 
So how, how did these uh, one-year high in new listings affect our total inventory? Ugh, well, we're still at about 8,700 active listings. That is low. It only increased about 210 units more from last year, or sorry, from last month. So we're up like two and a half percent over April's active inventory. And this is now our sixth month in a row being sub 9,000 listings total. Incredibly unusual marketplace. We don't see the listing, active listings uh, metrics stay flat for more than maybe two months. And here we are six months in and it's only moved to 1500 units total kind of thing from like 7,500 up to uh, almost 9,000 here. So even with a 12 month high in new listings, this the demand is, is so much, I guess, greater if you will, because it's just eating up all the good listings and keeping that total inventory below 9,000. Overall, we are well below where we were just a year ago, about 22% lower than May of 2022. And we are 25% below our 10 year average. And keep in mind that is not adjusted for population growth. So obviously there's more people here than there were over the last 10 years. And yet there are 25% less listings in that same time frame. So you've got new listings and sales in and around your 10 year average, but it's happening at a time when there's a quarter less homes to choose from. This understandably is going to push up our sales to active listings ratio. And this metric is very uh, poignant, if you will, and very accurate to expect what's going to happen next with prices. Anything below, sorry, anything above 20% in the sales to active listings in a given month means that we're in a seller's market. And in May, that number hit 39%. That means we are well into a seller's market. That means sellers have the control. That means prices are going to go up. And that means, well, thanks to inventory, that buyers have very little to choose from. And if you are actively buying right now, you can probably uh, share the story or sentiment that it's, uh, it's a challenge. And if anything is good, chances are you are competing on offer date. This sales to active listings ratio increased a full 7% just last month. And to sound like a broken record here, fourth monthly increase in a row. All these metrics are up around the same time. <laughs> and this metric is up 26% since December. In December, we saw uh, basically the very low end of a balanced market. I think we were one point off of it actually being a buyer's market. It never hit buyer's market in this cycle. And now we are deep into a seller's market in only a four month change. So again, speaking to how quick that this Vancouver real estate market can shift. If, um, if we break it down by asset class, 28.5% for detached homes, 45% for townhomes, but get this one, condos, 46% sales to active listings ratio. Condos, which were kind of the forgotten child just a few months back, are suddenly the hottest asset class, meaning a lot of people have shifted their interests away from detached homes. They're still obviously at townhomes at almost the same um, percentage, but condos has jumped dramatically and is now leading the way as far as the most sought after uh, property type here at 46%. So you can really expect condo prices to be moving up at a faster rate than the other two types of homes in the immediate future here. And when it comes to price, well, let's dive right into it. So HPI, the hedonically adjusted home price index has gone up another $18,000 just last month. That's uh, equates to about 1.3% where your average home is now $1,188,000. Broken record time, fourth monthly increase in a row. Since January, Homes are up 7% already this year. Um, that equates to about $76,000. And that's five months in. I mean, we're on pace for, what, 16% on the year? We won't hit that, but well, we also didn't think we'd hit this. So I don't know. <laughs> Correct me when I'm wrong, please. Compared to last year, we are definitely still lower. Prices, according to the HBI, have not recovered since the peak. We're about 5.5% lower than we were this time last year. The all-time high price, as far as HPI is concerned, did happen back in April of 2022, where we are now off just about 6.5% from that peak. 
Uh, definitely recognize, as I mentioned, probably every month here that HPI is a lagging indicator. It lags about three months behind, let's say, median and average prices. So let's go see what those are doing so you can expect to see or know rather where HPI is going next. Looking at median, median increased, median prices increased $10,000 last month and are now sitting at $980,000. Median has seen five months of uh, consecutive price increases and median price is up about 110 k since December. Median is currently the highest it has been in 11 months and is the fourth highest all time. Only February, March and April of, of last year were higher than where we are today at median. And median peaked last year at a million and we're at 980,000 right now. So median is only 2% under its all time high. Average is pretty similar. Average jumped up about $14,000 last month is sitting at 1,312,000. Average is uh, seen the fourth monthly row fourth monthly increase in a row, excuse me, and is up $145,000 during that time. Average prices are sitting about two and a half percent under their all time high from last year. So if we've got meat in an average two, two and a half percent under all time, and HPI is about six and a half percent under all time, you can kind of see where this is going to go with HPI in the coming months, most likely. Now let's shift over to days on market. Because like I just mentioned, if you are actively buying in this marketplace, you will likely have noticed that almost every listing now is holding offers when it goes to market. So typically what we see here is a, a seller will or a seller's agent will take a property to market on a Monday and say, okay, everybody can come see it for the next seven days. And on the following Monday at four or 5 p.m., that's when we're going to entertain all the offers at one time. So people go through the home once, maybe twice, maybe get a pre-inspection, et cetera. And then we're seeing two, three, four, five, ten offers on average here um, on properties on that following Monday. That means a lot of these homes are selling in seven days. Well, that is reflected here in the days on market, which fell to nine days on average. That's down an additional two from uh, just last month. <laughs> and if we look to when things were a little more civilized just four months ago, that same days on market average was 30. And now we're down to nine. And I think for context, for reference, nine days on market is quite low. Like it's very low. Uh, the hottest markets we've had on record were 2016, 2017. And during that two year sort of bull run there, only one of those months of those 24 months combined saw nine days on market. The rest were higher, averaging 10 and 11. And the lowest days on market ever recorded was eight, which happened just last year in 2021, a few months hit those. So we're one day above the all time low here as, as far as days on market goes. So it's just like every metric is like basically screaming red hot. And yet in this environment where again, the, the marketplace has basically absorbed 425 basis point hike. And this is the same hike that basically drove prices down 15% overall is now seeing them on the upswing here. So that, I guess begs the question, what's going to happen next here? Because we've got a market that's essentially overheated. It's too hot and it's going to get the attention of the Bank of Canada. It's going to get a, the attention of OSFI and they might start to have to repress it again. And, and how did they do that? Because of course it's easier to change the overnight interest rate than it is to go and build X amount of homes. Um, we do have a Bank of Canada announcement. The next interest rate announcement comes on June the 7th. The GDP prints are up, jobs are up, real estate prices are up. There is a lot of firepower if Tiff Macklem wants to increase rates, could be a quarter point. Now, I personally think rates are going to be held there. We'll find out here in, in, in the five days if I'm wrong or not, but ultimately, we see the debt levels, of course, of mortgage variable mortgage rate holders and all these businesses that have been taking loans and, of course, the government of Canada, they're all stretched as well. So, again, it's that continual pull from both sides. You've got highly indebted government, business, and private sector and individuals, and then you've got home prices, GDP, employment ripping. So which one, which one do you protect more? Which one is going to hurt the economy or people less? Um, very tough decision. Again, that's why I kind of think status quo will be the outcome. We'll see it in, in uh, five days here, but ultimately 
they don't, they, Bank of Canada does not like seeing home prices going up as fast as they are. And let's be honest here with continued new listings, very low and well, ultimately inventory incredibly low. We are poised for more price increases. When you have a 39% seller's market here, sellers are in control. And that nine days on market really speaks to it as well. Every metric speaks to it. So in the immediate future, being a couple months here, what, June, July, expect prices to go higher. Again, we're seeing 1.3%, 1.5%, 1.6% almost every month now. It's too hot. We don't want to see a double digit gain in 2023. Um, we're, but we're only three points off of that. So maybe it'll happen. And something else I thought of today too, that I wanted to share with everybody. A lot of these higher prices that GBRD experiences, it's almost like this self-fulfilling prophecy. And, and what I mean by that is when demand pulls back, when prices go down, that's when developers, people who supply housing for the most part, go to the sidelines because if there's no demand, they don't want to release their product because not enough people are going to buy it. Maybe they won't hit their sales target to get construction financing, et cetera, which is typically about 60% of homes need to sell pre-sale before they're allowed to get their construction financing. When prices are going up and in this kind of a market where you can tell the demand is huge, developers say, okay, great. Well, this is an environment where we can bring a product to market. It will get absorbed to our 60% goal or higher. And we can charge a future dollar value because people are optimistic and sentiment is high in a price appreciating environment. As backwards as it all is, that's the reality. That's human nature. That's how people like to buy. Back when the ease on market was 30 and prices were going down, sales were a third of where they are today. Prices are ripping higher, rates are higher, and yet people are racing to go and, and buy real estate now. It's, it's it seems counterintuitive, but it is the reality that we're in here. So again, just something I wanted to share there. In this environment, when it's hot, you are gonna see more product come to market. You're gonna see more homes being built. And even though, that supply will help. It's just, again, it seems like we're in this place where demand, demand, demand is just still insatiable and is still leading the way. It really is. And, and that's what's pushing prices up when, of course, almost every home out there is being fought for with two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight buyers offers on every single one. Anyway, that's kind of my thoughts this week on what we're seeing in the marketplace. And I uh, would love to hear your feedback or your stories. Are you out there? Did you just buy? Did you just sell? How was that experience for you? And you know, anything you'd like to share, we'd love to hear it and uh, share it with our community here. So as always, thank you so much for tuning in. Have a wonderful day and uh, we'll see you next week. Bye.